Hello and welcome to the sixth game development with Python 3 and Pygame uh, tutorial video. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is adding our little blocks that we want to avoid. So we've got our car, and we could in theory say that the car is moving, but we don't really have anything to give us a sense of movement. We can move the car left or right, but we don't feel like the car is moving forward or anything. So we're, now we're going to do that. And we're going to add some blocks, basically, that are going to move. And that our, our goal towards the end of the game is going to be to avoid uh, these blocks. So first we need some blocks, because we don't have any. So now we're going to define a function for some blocks. So now you can probably start seeing my point about the group of functions above your game loop. <laughs> so anyway, now let's add our next uh, function. So we're going to define um, these as things. We're just going to say things that we want to avoid. Later on, we might uh, have a function that will, uh, at random, generate a block, a polygon, another car, or something like that. But for now, uh, we'll just stick to blocks. But I'll just call it things for now just to uh, spark some imagination. Things are going to have the following parameter, um, for us at least. Uh, we want to, there's the x location, so we'll say thing x. The y location, thing y, or thingy. The width, so thing w height thing h and then finally the color of our thing so color now uh the next thing uh what thing is all we're gonna have to really do for thing is we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna use pygames draw functionality so we're gonna draw a rectangle and so the way it works is you specify uh that you you're going to draw a rectangle and then you're going to say where are you going to draw the rectangle what color will that rectangle be and then you specify all the coordinates basically so the x, the y, and then the width and the height, and then that's it. So uh, let's do that. So for this, it'll be pygame.draw.rect. And where do we want to draw that? Well, we want to draw it to the game display. Display. Um, what, <clears throat> what color do we want it to be? Well, whatever color we pass through. And now we have the parameters of the location, basically where are we going to draw how do we draw this um so first you have thing x thing y so that starts the y the x and y coordinates so the top left and then how wide is this box and then how tall is this box and then we can kind of make a, a you know a rectangle out of that so you've got thing x thing y and then thing width thing height so thing x thing y thing width thing height and that will draw um, a box to our screen. Now, what we want to do is we want to come down to our game loop here, and we need to uh, specify um, at least some initial the, the starting point for this block um, to be avoided. So we'll, we'll start this uh, these definitions here. So first we have thing underscore, and we'll say thing start x. Start x is going to equal and for this, we're going to say, because like, if we specify the same x location every time, it's just the, the object is just going to pass us starting at the same spot every time. That's too easy. So we actually want to, we're going to use the random module. And this time, I'm going to remember to import it, hopefully. And we're going to say random.rand range. And we want to uh, have the start x. So that's, you know, the x is basically left to right. Um, we want that to be anything random between 0 and the display width. Now before I forget, let's go all the way to the top and import random. So we can utilize the random functionality in Python. So now we'll come back down here. Where was I? Here we go. So that's where the start x will be. Now where will the start y be? Well, thing underscore start y if we start it at um, zero, let's say, the, um, the object will basically start uh, like on the screen. So y, again, is the top left, right? So the y location of a box right, is measured at the top left. So if we said y is zero, then that object would actually start on the screen. Um, but we want to start like off the screen a bit. So you know, you can understand that, you know, an object might be various sizes and stuff like that, but 
for now, we can, we'll start the object at minus 600. So 600 pixels off the screen. Um, so we'll do that. And then we're going to say, how fast do we want these objects to move, basically? So we're going to have thing underscore speed. And we'll say each time we redraw it, we'll, we can move it up to 7 pixels. And then how wide are these things going to be? So thing width. We'll say 100 pixels. And then thing height, we'll say 100 pixels. So it'll be a 100 by 100 box, basically. Now, um, we have these kind of starting values. And then the game loop begins, basically. Or the while loop begins. Um, so we'll come down here. And basically, before we draw, well, it has to be after we fill. So game display.fill white and then let's just make some space because we're always going to need to do everything after that fill so now we'll draw our boxes so we're going to say things so we're referencing our things function which is up here and what i like to do when the function is so far away and we have all these parameters like this i like to just copy the function like this copy and then come down um here and just kind of with a comment paste the function so we can kind of see like all the parameters that we have to have. So thing x, thing y. So we know thing underscore start x, um, thing underscore start y. Um, then we have thing underscore width, thing underscore height. And then finally, we have the color parameter. And that's just going to be black. We'll just use black for now. And then we draw those things. And the only thing we want to change about this, this block is we don't want to change um, x. Like once x has been defined, we want to keep x because we want this block to move down. But the thing we do want to change is y. So um, the up down basically is what we want to change. We don't want to make the block move left or right. Uh, we just want to move it up and down. We don't want to change width. We don't want to change height. So how we change thing start y is really simple. We just say thing underscore start y uh, plus equals thing underscore speed. So this adds 7 to thing y. And so each time we run through this, this while loop, right? Each time we loop, we will add 7 to it. And then we draw that thing, right? Because we add 7 to it after we've drawn it. And then we come through again, we redraw it, and it will be seven pixels lower. And then we're doing the same thing over and over and over and over. And um, and that's really it. So let's go ahead and run that really quick, make sure we didn't screw anything up here. It's taking a while to come up. There's our game running. There goes our block, and it's off the screen. Block's gone. Awesome. Now. Um, if we were to run it again, remember that was over kind of over to the left. Let's say we run it again. And this time it was over to the left, but a little closer to us. Let's run it again. Yeah, this time it's all the way over to the right. So we know that random functionality is working and all that, but we're not getting any more blocks. Like after we run through one block, they don't come back, right? So we need to have some sort of handling to where when the block is off the screen, it comes back. Um, and then ideally it comes back in a new location, right? So um, here we have our little logic statement, um, all that. This is, you know, did we crash? Now we're going to need to ask, um, just like, you know, we can measure whether or not we're off the screen, we can also measure whether or not the block is off the screen. So here we're going to ask if thing underscore start y is greater than the display height. So remember our little problem with our car before where it wasn't saying we crashed until we were all the way off the screen? We're gonna now use that and say that we don't wanna say that the block is gone until it's completely off the screen. So things start y, so if that is greater than the display height, so again, y is measured from the top down. So at the very bottom is the display height. So if y is greater than that, then we know it's off the screen. So if that's the case, what we want to say is thing underscore uh, start y equals um, 
zero minus. So if we just said zero, it would draw the block on the screen again on us. So we don't want to do that. So zero minus uh, thing underscore height. And what this is going to do for us is initially we want it to be 600 because when the game starts, the game starts. And if the user isn't totally ready or not, uh, the block's going to come and it might hit them right away. So we want it to be 600 pixels off the screen so they have a, a minute to kind of gather themselves and then the block start coming. But once the block starts coming, as one goes off the screen, we want another one immediately to show up. So we're going to say zero minus thing height so it immediately pretty much shows up. So then after that, we're going to say not only do we want to reset Y, we want to reset X because if we just restart Y, it'll come in the same spot every time. So we'll run this really quick. There's our block. There's our block again. There's our block again. So obviously, that's a pretty boring game. <laughs> so we want to reset um, X as well. So while X was random at the very beginning, it's not random again. So we need to do um, the resetting of X as well. So we're going to say thing underscore start X equals random dot rand range again and then zero to display width so we're basically calling that same function that we called all the way at the top again so um, this just creates it just chooses a random number between zero and the width of the display so in our case that's 800 so it just chooses a random number between zero and 800 and it will draw us at that um, at that number so in theory um, again it could say that X, so the top left, X is, say it was 800, our object is 800, or is 100 pixels wide, but it could draw that X off the screen, or have it like only one pixel of it on the screen. So you might see that, but that's okay. Uh, we're not gonna worry too much about that, but we could also, we could say random range display width minus block width, or something like that. So let's go ahead and run that really quick. And we have that block. Ooh, we just missed it. Now you can see, okay, so now we've got kind of like a random where the blocks come from is just kind of uh, kind of random. So it's it's totally random. The random in programming is really a pseudo-random. You can't really have a computer generate truly random numbers. Um, but it's good enough. And it's good enough for a video game, that's for sure. So anyway, um, we have that now, but the problem that we're seeing, of course, is even though we're hitting these blocks, nothing bad is happening to us. We're just kind of running over them. <laughs> so, so we want to have some sort of handling that handles when we run over a block and all of that. So anyway, and as you can see, the blocks were kind of off the screen there. So we want to have you crashed if we hit a block as well. So we'll close out of this, and that's what we're going to be covering in the next video is, is handling a bit of these blocks. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions or comments on this video, feel free to leave them below. As always, thanks for watching.